It's another rainy, stormy day here in Chicago. It's officially spring, so we're gonna get a lot of this weather. But we're here at BMW because my car is getting serviced today. Um, so we're at Laurel BMW Westmount, which is where I usually come to get my car serviced. It's where I actually bought my car. So yeah, we got a couple cool cars. Uh, we got a new 19 i8 Roadster right here. And then this is actually very new. It's the new BMW Z4. This is the 30i, so it's got the four-cylinder engine. Uh, this is the first one they've got, and they're still very new to the state. So I haven't had the opportunity to drive it yet. But my friend who works here has, and he says that it's absolutely beautiful to drive. Now, this is also getting a six-cylinder engine, so that's supposed that's going to be even throatier and even better. But apparently, even the four-cylinder in itself is a very good drive. But yeah, guys, my car's inside the service bay, but I wanted to talk to you guys about another car that BMW came out with recently. To be honest, when it first came out, I hated it. Um, it's starting to grow on me a little bit, especially the exterior styling and design-wise. But, you know, I still feel like it has a very confused personality. And the car that I'm talking about is none other than the new BMW 8 Series. So they've actually got the M850i, and that's technically killing off my car, which is the 6 Series Coupe. And when the, when the, M, when the 8 Series Grand Coupe comes out, that's probably going to officially kill off the 6 Series Grand Coupe. But yeah, guys, let's go inside, take a look at it. The car they have here is absolutely beautiful. So I want to show you guys in detail and then talk about why it just confuses me too much. All right, guys, let's go inside. All right, guys, so this is the rear of the M850. The first thing that really concerns me or the first thing that I didn't like as much was just how big it is, you know? Like if you look at the car for a second, you can see the distance from the bottom of the rear bumper to the top of the rear trunk is just too high, especially coming off the 6 Series, which is supposed to be like the coupe of the 5 Series. So it's supposed to be a bit more aggressive and a bit more nimble, right? Which is the car that this killed off. It's just too big for me. As far as uh, the tips go, you have technically two tips, but you've actually got four pipes. So inside each tip, you've got two pipes. But for the sake of styling or maybe the fact that the M8, which is going to be the full M version, is going to have four pipes, they've decided to do two on here. Let's talk about the dashing really quick. This is actually the M850i. So what BMW has been doing in recent years is they've been giving some of their cars some of the M performance treatment. So for example, the M760 Li, uh, the M550i. So those are cars that aren't the full like M5, but they get some M performance parts, M performance styling, things like that. So that's actually what the M850 is. And if you notice the badging on the M850 and the M550, they're not gonna be the traditional like chrome, silver, they're gonna be something called cerium gray, and that's absolutely beautiful in my opinion for two reasons. So, the first thing is it's not traditional, so it looks really nice, but the second thing is, especially on this car, this car is finished in a color called Dravid Gray Metallic, and if you look in the light, right, you can just kind of see this kind of bronze metal flake in the paint, which in my opinion contrasts the cerium gray badging absolutely beautifully, so it really adds together the depth of the paint of the car, guys. So let's move to the side really quick. Um, these are the rear tires. So you get Bridgestone Potenzas on it, S007s, and the rear is going to be 275 20s and the fronts are going to be 245 20s You get summer tires on it, high-performance tires. I believe they're running flat as well. But yeah, guys, so my favorite profile in this car is actually the side profile because I think it really brings out the dimensions of the car. And you really get a feeling of just how long the front is versus the back. All right, guys, so now you got some strong lines that come along the entire length of the car, and we're just going to come to the front really quick. Let's look at the front fascia. So... BMW's grills have become, been becoming really big. In my opinion, I feel like it's more commanding, and especially with road presence nowadays. I feel like the, the grill size isn't too bad, and it, it isn't too polarizing, but I find it okay. But anyway, uh, so these are actually active grills, so they can open vents depending on how, whether the air engine needs to be cooled or they want some more aero. So they can close it for aerodynamics or open it if they want the engine to be cooled. You have a front camera for the 360 parking system. Uh, you have the front radar stuff for semi-autonomous driving capabilities. So this front bumper is actually not going to be the standard front bumper. Uh, this has actually got the M Performance Aero Kit, which is part of the M850 treatment. So this is going to be a bit more aggressive than the standard bumper. Coming along the side, you've got the laser lights. So these are going to be the, uh, you know, like the competition to Audi's Matrix lights. So these are going to be like the bit smarter lights that can do the auto dimming capabilities and um, adaptive capabilities. So that's from BMW. So again, you get the BMW laser badging and beautiful light design. I, you can kind of see the like crystalline structure in the LEDs and I think that looks absolutely beautiful. You can kind of see the lines as well that come up and then you got the nice blue hue right there. So these are some details I just absolutely love in this light. I actually picked up BMW 5 Series recently and uh, we were looking at these lights and I think they look absolutely beautiful. All right guys, so again, like you can kind of see that bronzish flake in the paint right here and it looks absolutely beautiful. So you've got a nice slope back design, and then in the top, you've got this carbon fiber, which is an option. So the M6 Grand Coupe actually came with carbon fiber standard, but they've continued that on this car, and that looks great. And then you come to the back, 
and you just see how big this glass panel is and how slow back it is and i absolutely love this i hope they can continue this on the grand coupe as well when they come out with it you've got this nice tiny little spoiler on the trunk and then just opening the back the trunk is huge this is the two-door version and the seats basically at the end up there and you can honestly fit two bodies in here it's just massive you have all the bmw pre-delivery stuff uh, right here but yeah guys honestly it's a pretty cool package so far and it's also power close Yeah, guys, so let's get inside. Let's take a look at some of the features and interior stuff, and let's talk about a little bit of my confusion. So before we do that, though, it's got soft-closed doors. So those are doors where if you bring it close to it, it'll just suck it in and close it itself. So those are mainly because these are frameless windows. So when you roll the window down, you have absolutely no frame on the door, so you don't want it to go out of alignment. So it's got, fr it's got soft close functionalities. All right, guys, so... This car has actually been sitting in the showroom for a while, so it's actually very low on charge. So I'm pretty sure you've seen a lot of the tech features on the car, so I don't know if I wanna run through all of it really quick, but let's just talk about my general confusions about this car, because that's what I really wanted to cover in this video. All right, guys, so I wanna talk about my confusion, but before that, let's just run through the design, because it's mainly the design philosophy that I have a confusion with. All right, so you're here, right? Um, couple of things. So. The steering wheel feels very plain for me, and keep in mind, this is the, M8, uh, the M850i. So the way that BMW wants to place this car is they want to place it to be a competitor to cars like the Mercedes S-Class Coupe and the Bentley Continental GT, which are very expensive, very exquisite pieces of art that basically, if you look anywhere in the car, you get this feeling of absolutely ultra comfort, and you have, it's just, they're just unparalleled cars. And then you're sitting here and I feel like it has a very split personality because you're sitting here and I have a, I have the same G35 series with M Sport Pack and I get the same steering wheel. I have the same feel. Okay, the the, the cluster on mine isn't like completely digital, but this is completely, digi completely digital, which is new. But honestly, even that's trickling the new 3 Series. And then you look at the center console and then this is touchscreen now. So the car isn't actually on, but... You turn it on and this is touchscreen now, so you can touch it and play around with it and do all the stuff that you want to do. Uh, so yeah, that's touchscreen, so that's that's great. But yeah, it's got a very split personality in my opinion. So you get these nice glass controls, right? Which, you know, you touch it and it feels good. It's supposed to be uh, an extra level of uh, comfort and an extra level of textures. And then you look at the back of the uh, glass control, which is the actual back of the gear shift right here. And this is plastic. So when you're actually resting your hand on it and you actually grab it to like actually shift gears, you realize that you're grabbing plastic, which just doesn't make sense to me. And then the same thing with the, with the paddles here. So you're looking at the paddles and you're like, okay, they're nice and aluminum. They're nice aluminum paddles. And then you go around to the back of the paddles and then you find out that the, that the back is actually plastic. So when you actually pull the paddles, you get a feeling of like, cheap plastic and you know like you're trying to compete with the mercedes s class here you can't you everywhere you touch everywhere you look you have to feel like you're in like just the lap of luxury and you just don't get that feeling you look here and you have like nice gloss back gloss black so here you've got gloss black on all the buttons everything and you look up here and you have like a nice row of just like plastic you've you got aluminum in the middle you got nice stainless steel aluminum buttons in the middle but then you've got plastic on either side you just run your hand over it doesn't doesn't even feel that expensive and then you have this nice braided stainless steel finish here but then like right there right in the middle of the dash you have plastic which doesn't make sense and the air vents are also plastic so that really that really polarizes my opinion of this car and again here like you've got this burmeister advanced audio system you've got the mood lighting you've got this very expensive panel this very nice looking panel and even the look at that like the burmeister has like integrated lights into the actual speakers and that looks absolutely exquisite but then this is plastic again so like, it's kind of very, it's, it's, it's very polarizing to me. If they, if they want to fit this and if they want to let this compete with the Mercedes S-Class, it has to be at S-Class level, which is where they've kind of placed it in their segment. They've placed it in a number above the 7 Series. So it's supposed to compete with that S-Class. It's supposed to be the 7 Series Coupe, which is the lap of luxury. And it just doesn't feel like that. Now, keep in mind, this is a BMW and BMWs are supposed to have the ultimate driving machines. They're supposed to have the ultimate driving feel. So I haven't driven this car either because it's still very new. But again, my friend who's worked here has, and he told me that this car feels very nice to drive, but I just don't understand why they had to change the number to the eight series. They had to make the new eight. This is the new eight series. They had to make the new eight series 
and they haven't been able to make the interior absolutely unmatched in their range. It, I feel like I'm in maybe a more expensive 5 Series. I, I honestly think that in the next iteration of the 5 Series, it could look like this, which I don't think is what the ultimate lap of luxury should be like. So now that that kind of comes to their design philosophy, which is another thing I wanted to talk about. So Mercedes has been implementing for a couple of years now something called a top-down design. So what they did was, and they were very strategic with this, they released the Mercedes S-Class first, and then they released the Mercedes C-Class with the same design philosophy as the Mercedes S-Class. So what the public then perceived that as is, they perceived the C-Class, which is the entry-level version, as the baby S-Class. Whereas BMW has been doing something called the bottom-up philosophy. So if you get into an 8 Series, it feels like a more luxurious 3 Series, which is... Not exactly what you want to be achieving when you're a luxury brand, in my opinion. When you get into a base level 3 Series, you want to feel like you're in a very prestigious car. You don't want to feel like you're in an... You don't want to get in the 8 Series and feel like you're in a beefier 3 Series. That's not what I think they should be doing. So yeah, that's just a, a little bit of the difference in design philosophies. And again, Mercedes has been implementing that strategy throughout their entire range. Now they've got the E-Class, which kind of sits between the C and the S. You've got even the CL... You've got the CLS, which kind of mimics the same design philosophies as all of those. So yeah, those are some things that I think that Mercedes that Mercedes has been able to really capitalize on, leverage, and understand. And again, it's, it also has to do with when they've introduced each model because they had to be very sure that they introduced the S-Class before the C-Class and they had to time that introduction just right, which they were able to do. But I feel like BMW has to really get that right because again, this is just like the... I feel like I'm sitting in a more beefier 3 Series rather than in the ultimate lap of luxury, which is what the 8 Series is supposed to be. But yeah, guys, other than that, like, again, the tech, the tech is very, uh, the tech has been covered a lot. So I don't know if I want to, if you guys want to see that again. So I'm probably not going to go over everything in depth, but yeah, so you get the 360 degree surround cameras, you get the parking system, you have your individual drive modes. Again, you have sport here, which is very good. Apparently, apparently this is a very sporty car. So that's fantastic. Um, parking brake here. So you've got, when you open this up, you've got uh, the wireless charging capabilities, two cup holders, cigarette lighter, USB charger. Guys, again, so this car has actually been sitting in the showroom for a while, so I keep getting a warning anytime I turn it on. So I turn it on and you get the warning called, you keep getting a warning every couple of seconds that's telling you the battery's almost dead, so you can't actually do anything on it. But let's try and do some things as quickly as possible. Okay, so driving information. So yeah, vehicle battery is almost dead. So sport display is a very cool screen in my opinion. So this is gonna give you your lateral Gs, your forward Gs, all that. Yeah, so the battery keeps dying. But yeah, it keeps giving you your lateral Gs. You have the gesture control. You have the full touch screen now, which is all really good. Um, as far as trim goes, I love the way that BMW has done the trim uh, in a certain sense. Cause again, it is dual tone. So again, so when, when I, I actually was contemplating getting the S-Class when I got the six series, but I felt like the S-Class was too... I like to call it land yachting because land yachting is because yachting is like a very leisurely activity and you want to do it when you're really relaxed. And I feel like that's what the S class was best at. You could just kind of relax and you wouldn't have you didn't drive hard and you just kind of like wafted your way from one place to another. But, you know, like as a college kid, like that's not what you want to do. Um, but then this the design philosophy on the inside of this car is a lot more sporty, a lot more aggressive. You have just the stitching on the seat is so much more aggressive than the stitching on a, on a S class seat. Um, I don't know, like just the just the way that it looks in itself. You got a, you got a much more sporty vibe from the inside of this car. Again, the center console. So if you're sitting here, the center console is actually angled towards the driver. It's not actually facing center; it's facing towards you. So you get more of a cockpit style view. Uh, let's try and turn the dash on really quickly again. A dash is another place where I'm kind of polarized with new BMWs, is because they're fully digital. Again, if you want, so if you want to have a very dynamic driving feeling, and if you want to have like a sports car. I don't know why they need to have a misshaped taco and speedo. I feel like the taco and speedo should be kind of linear, or at least like very straight and very easy to understand. That way, even if I'm looking out the windshield and I can kind of see the speedo and the taco out of the corner of my eye, I should have a very good idea of what they're doing. But I feel like with a digital taco, especially when it's so oddly shaped, you just can't get that feeling. Uh, another thing is just lastly, uh, while I'm already kind of crapping on BMW, 
it's fully digital, but I feel like they didn't use their imagination as much as they could have. Again, it's very nice because it's very colorful and like even here, like even in your center console, you're, you've got a lot of animations. Like the car is there and then you've got like vehicle status and you can get, you get some very nice colors and all that stuff. It died again, but yeah, you get some very nice colors and stuff. But if you've seen Audi's virtual cockpit or even Mercedes on the new GT four door, just the amount that the actual cluster moves around, like they've actually used the digital capabilities of the car. The fact that you're not bound to anything and everything can now move around because you're in a digital, you're in a digital world. Like, like Range Rover, for example, they show you every animation everywhere. Like, things are always moving around. I feel like BMW could have done so much more, and it just doesn't capture my imagination as I wish it did. Um, as far as the audio system, Bowers and Wilkins, I can't really play anything because of copyright infringement reasons. Again, it is a this is a YouTube video, so I can't really play other people's music. But yeah, Bowers and Wilkins, obviously, the advanced surround sound system is amazing. As far as visibility goes, you've got nice visibility in the front because of this nice sloped windscreen it basically comes all the way to your head so like you have huge visibility in the front side visibility is also great for a sports car you've got the nice bulging you can see the nice bulging views of the car the nice rear quarter right there if you look at the front you can kind of see i know there's a lot of light but you can kind of see how the hood just kind of bulges in the front so it gives it a very muscular presence when you're driving it um but the the main the main uh lack of visibility is in the rear because of that long slope back rear design you just can't see that much out of the back. The rear window's pretty small and it's just really angular, but it's just too small in my opinion. Last thing before we jump in the back, guys, is this Alcantara headliner. So I actually have Alcantara on the M6 as well and I love the way it feels. And I know that a lot of people don't notice it, but it's a nice touch. All right, guys, so let's just go to the other side, jump in the back and let's talk about the back seats. All right, guys, so again, I put the seat here for my driving height, which is about 6'2". Uh, so the way you pull the seat forward is there's a little strap here, so you just pull that and then it's electric so you wait for it to go forward oh and then you jump in and i'm 62 and i set it up for a 62 person and then you pull this back and then you just wait for it to cut your feet off because it just keeps going it doesn't detect that you're there it just keeps going until yep it keeps going comes all the way to the back and then it moves back forward again so yeah guys this is the back seat like I said, I'm 6'2 and I have virtually no room. And yeah, that's uh, that's if I'm driving. So this is what this is a seat I set up for when I'm really cramped in the front. And this is a seat that I set up for when I'd actually drive. So as you can see, there's basically just space for my hand down there. So yeah, guys, that's uh, that's the amount of leg room that I have. Now let's talk about some other stuff. As far as headroom goes, I think you can already see that my head's hitting the back and that is because of this whole slope back design. And this is the coupe. So when the grand coupe comes out, you should be having more room in the back. Uh, as far as side stuff goes, you've got nice come you've got nice support on this side. So for example, this is a performance car. So if someone is doing some performance driving in the front seat, you have some nice lateral support on this side. But as far as this side goes, the left side of my body, I have absolute there's no bolstering. So let's look at this seat for an example. There's no bolstering on this side versus this side you've got like obviously the side of the car to support you. So yeah, guys, I wish like they had done a bit more bolstering, especially because this is only a two plus two. There's no third middle seat. This is my seatbelt. This is the other guy's seatbelt. So it's only two plus two. So I feel like they could have added some more bolstering here. And there's no there's no center armrest either. So like they could have definitely added a bit more bolstering or something to support the rest of my body. Uh, I get these tiny windows for window sake here. There's a new Z4 right there. It looks so good in that color. But yeah, you get that. And then... uh. That's just about it. But I guess if you are hitting your head, you might as well be hitting it up on Alcantara, right? And then you got the Bowers and Wilkins next to you here, which is really cool, especially when the lights are on at night. Uh, that's fantastic. And then you've got the Bowers and Wilkins here. So this is the advanced sound system. So there's actually, like, I know that the 6 Series has this. I'm not sure about this sound system, but I'm assuming it does. There's actually bass in the seats. So when you're driving along and you have a song with heavy bass, your entire body basically vibrates. So it's an absolutely captivating experience. But yeah, guys, there's no, uh, there's no, there's no immediate evidence of plastic here, except in one glaring spot. Can you hear that? Right here. They have put this plasticky non leather material right where you're sitting, which again, if you're competing with the Mercedes S Class, you can't keep, you can't put plastic where your arms are going to be hitting the entire time. You know it has to be leather. You have to have leather everywhere, and I'm just a little disappointed with that. So, 
again, this is my confusion with this car. Is it supposed to be a car to compete with the Mercedes S-Class, which is where I think BMW intended to position it? Or are they going to try and make it more sporty? In which case, it does that. It is a very sporty car, but I need to feel a bit more special when I'm driving it. I can't feel like I'm... So when I look up there, right, when I look at the front cockpit, I, f I can't feel like I'm looking into a... 5 Series or like a 5 Series M Sport Pack or something like that. I have to feel like I'm in an 8 Series, like the next level. I have to feel like I'm a level up than everyone else. I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog. I know today was a bit of a rant, but let me know what you guys think. This is my honest opinion of this car. Uh, I I, I, I want to love it. I want to love it because it is replacing my car. And I don't know, maybe one day, like when the M8 Grand Coupe comes out, I might get it. But right now, as of right now, I just don't understand where it's supposed to be in the lineup. All right, guys, so it's the end of the day. The car is finally ready. So we haven't done all the work to it just yet because I have to come back. Apparently, it needs a new uh, fuel tank because we need to replace two of the sensors in the tank, and you can replace one of them. But for the other one, you kind of have to actually replace the entire tank. So that's going to be done. So the car is here, but parked right in front of me was actually a 650i Grand Coupe. So this has got the N63 V8, which is kind of the D2 non-M version of the V8 in mine. So it's got slightly less power. Um, these were actually the two cars I was contemplating, either get a 650i and then potentially tune it or get the actual uh, M6 V8 and then just drive it how it is. But yeah, the added advantages of this were I would have a better fuel economy, obviously, but then I'd also have X drive so I can drive it all year round. But then you know what I realized? Like I'm in college and it's a rear wheel drive car, so have some fun with it, you know? So I ended up going with the M6. I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog. I'm just gonna be going back home and then tomorrow, Probably gonna go check out some other cars. We might have to come back here because we have to get that fuel tank replaced. So if the parts are in tomorrow, we're gonna come back in and get that checked out. Otherwise, yeah, guys, uh, potentially we'll go check out some Porsches. And yeah, we're gonna have a nice weekend.